this video, we are going to hear fraction multiplication. First, we'll start with simple multiplication of one number by positive integers. And we'll hear this on a piano. Every sound from an acoustic instrument has what are called harmonics, which are multiples of the fundamental tone. The first harmonic is the fundamental tone itself, and the second harmonic has a frequency, or pitch, that is two times the fundamental frequency. We hear this as the octave on a piano. If we multiply the fundamental frequency by three, then we get another note that is higher in pitch than the octave. Let's name these notes. C is the fundamental. The octave above this fundamental, the note we get after multiplying the fundamental by two, is also called C on a piano, but let's call it C prime to differentiate it from the fundamental. And the note we got after multiplying the fundamental by three is the note G on a piano, but let's call it G prime. When looking at a piano, we can notice that there is another G that is between C and C prime. How could we go from G prime, what we found after multiplying by three, to this G that is between C and C prime? Remember that going up an octave meant multiplying by two. So this means we can go down an octave in pitch by dividing by two. If we put all of this together, we can start at our fundamental note C, multiply by three to go up to G prime, and then divide by two to end up at G, that is between C and C prime. We could write this mathematically as C times three divided by two equals G. It just so happens when multiplication is followed by division, we can group the division together into parentheses. So we can rewrite this as C times parentheses three divided by two, which we can then write as C times the fraction three over two, which gives us G. What this also shows us is how to multiply an integer by a fraction in general. C is the name of a note, but it does stand for a note number or a frequency. And using the steps we had before, we can discover that multiplying an integer by a fraction amounts to multiplying the integer by the numerator and then dividing by the denominator. So C times three halves is the same thing as C times parentheses three divided by two, which we can then rewrite as C times three in parentheses divided by two. And we must note, we're allowed to do this only because the multiplication is first. So when we start at our fundamental note C and hear the G that is in the space of one octave, meaning between C and C prime, we have essentially just heard multiplication by three halves. The space between the notes C and G is called a perfect fifth. And this leads us to our next example. This time, let's start at the note G that's the perfect fifth of our fundamental C. We're going to go up two octaves from this note. And when we do this, we are hearing the fourth harmonic of this note, G, since two times two is equal to four. And since we called G prime, the note that was one octave up from G, let's use G double prime to name the note that is two octaves up from G. If we used what we discussed earlier, we can actually notice that G double prime has a relation to C prime in the same way that G prime had a relation to C. G double prime is equal to C prime times three which we can then also rewrite as G double prime divided by three is C prime. What we've just discovered is that if we start at the note G, multiply by four, and then divide by three, we end up at the note C prime. And again, using what we've learned before, this means that G times the fraction four thirds is the note C prime. The interval from G to C prime is called a perfect fourth. And with this, we can learn how multiplying a fraction by another fraction works. First, recall how increasing the pitch by an octave worked. C times two is C prime. Then recall how increasing the pitch by a perfect fifth worked. C times three halves is G. And finally, recall how increasing the pitch by a perfect fourth worked. G times four thirds is C prime. What this means is that starting at C, multiplying by three halves, and then multiplying by four thirds, should be the same as starting at C and multiplying by two. In other words, three halves times four thirds is equal to two. We can use similar logic we had before and write the left hand side as three divided by two times four divided by three. And musically, we can hear these in order. Start at C, go up to the third harmonic by multiplying by three, then go down an octave by dividing by two, then go up two octaves by multiplying by four, and then go down a third harmonic, meaning dividing by three. Thus, we can use our order of operations and group the division and multiplication in the following way. Three divided by two times four in parentheses 
and then divide it by 3. And we can rewrite this then as the fraction 3 halves times 4 in parentheses, and then divide that by 3. And since we know how to multiply a fraction by an integer, we can start with 3 halves times 4, and that could just be rewritten as 12 halves. We can then simplify that to 6, so then what we have left is 6 divided by 3 is 2. All we have just seen is a verification of how we've learned to multiply fractions. Multiply numerators by numerators, denominators by denominators, and simplify at the end. So 3 halves times 4 thirds is the same thing as 12 divided by 6, which is 2. There are many ways to understand how to multiply fractions, but hopefully now you enjoy hearing them when you listen to music.